So what are we going to do today? We're going to build this setup. This is a direct dust monitor setup. It is lightweight, it is portable, it's a bright LCD panel. It has all the ins and outs that you need for such a setup. The monitor itself is good and it has a rather ingenious support for a wireless transmission right here. So we're going to check out this monitor and this setup in detail. And if you're looking for remote viewing for your client or your director or yourself on the budget side, I think you're going to enjoy this tiny little setup. So let's get started. This little tripod is from Manfrotto. It has a quick release right here that you can use to angle the monitor. It is lightweight, it is small, it is portable, and it's perfect for this setup. Right here on the back side of the monitor, we can see an NPF battery slot. You can use the 550s, 750s, 970s, 980s, 990s. Then this is the Moman Matrix 600S, a video transmission system up to Full HD 60p. I'm not going to go in detail on that one. I'm linking a video that I've already done on that unit in the top right hand corner. Simple full size HDMI to full size HDMI coiled cable. And then the monitor itself is called the Andy Cine C7 Lite. It's a seven inch touchscreen monitor with very good brightness, a very good feature set and overall a decent panel and it comes with a removable sun hood. First of all the monitor ships in a little case that's great for transport that I'm also using to transport the whole setup with the exception of the tripod because it doesn't fit. The monitor itself comes with cables, the sun hood, a pretty good NPF battery that has status indication LEDs and allows you to hook up another device via USB connection to power it. And we get a little monitor mount for cold shoes slash hot shoes. Now how does it all fit together? Rather simple. You take the frame for the sun hood and clip it in like this. You take the video transmission receiver and just attach it right here. HDMI cable connects the output of the receiver to the input of the monitor. Then a simple quarter inch mount on the bottom takes care of the little Manfrotto tripod. And last but not least, the sun hood goes on the unit via Velcro. Then you turn on the video receiver, the video transmitter. Once they have a stable signal, you push hold the on off button, adjust the monitor using the quick release on demand for the tripod to your desired angle and there you go. Now what are the inputs and outputs? Full size HDMI in, full size HDMI out, 12 volt DC in to power the monitor off the grid, 8 volt DC out to for example power the camera via a dummy battery. We have another DC input 5 volts USB type C to power the monitor we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone output, an SD card input for firmware updates and LUT support. On top we have a click wheel to navigate the menu and the on off button that also functions when the monitor is running as a lock for the touch functionality. We have the analysis feature which is super useful if you want a glance at, well, every possible assist feature, almost. We have waveforms, we have the vector scope, histogram, audio meters. We have focus assist, which is peaking, eight different levels and eight different colors, zebras from zero IRE to 100 IRE in steps of one, check field, RGB and grayscale, false color, spectrum and RE, HDR, HLG2020, HLG709, and HLG P3. Then LUT switch, SLOG2, SLOG3, LOG C, and VLOG are all pre-installed. Via LUT import, you can import as many cube files as you want, basically, because they're super small. Then we have grids, cinema guides, safe areas, a crosshair for the middle. We can switch to scan mode, the aspect ratio. We have a zoom. Anamorphic modes, pixel to pixel, image flip options, 
freeze frame options. We can select the brightness, the backlight, contrast, saturation, sharpness, hue, color temperature, and user groups. So you can customize up to four groups. Very important, of course, the LUT support because clients don't react well to log footage. <laughs> they just don't because they don't understand how it's going to be processed in post-production. So unless your camera can output the signal with the LUT baked in, selected inside the camera, you really want the monitor to be able to accept LUTs. So you can give them a way more accurate representation of what the image is going to look like in the end. And that's really how easy this is and how fast you can have remote viewing for your production. If you liked it, if you found it helpful, please make sure to leave a thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated. Any kind of comment or feedback is welcome and I'll try to answer as quickly as possible. All the tech that I've used in this video is linked in the description. As always, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you again soon.